was a beautiful day and uh, we were actually waiting for 14 days to come uh, first to Serbia, to Belgrade and then to Liberland. Uh, we were planning purposefully to start Liberland on birthday of Thomas Jefferson. It was 72nd birthday of Thomas Jefferson. We wanted to invoke the spirit of American Revolution. We're looking for more than two years into the places where it would be easiest or best to start a new country. And one of the requirements uh, from the Montevideo criteria for statehood is to have a territory and preferably territory that doesn't belong to any other state. So we are not a separatist. And uh, we found that place uh, on Wikipedia. There are some seven options back in the days. It was like a shopping list. And I was thinking, it, uh, I immediately felt that it's the right place because it was heart shaped. It was in culturally similar space like I'm used to, everybody loves Czech beer in, in this region. And it was, a, I think, a great size, actually, seven square kilometers, also very symbolic, a perfect seven square kilometers almost. Uh, so it, it is um, something which is doable even with the smaller number of people. Okay. Right after we established Liberland, it took 11 days. There was official reply from the Serbian government, which was very friendly. Territory of Republic of Serbia. And that official statement invoked a reaction from Croatia. There was immediately after a secret governmental meeting of Croatian government and that uh, basically decided that they will publicly say that Liberland is a joke. Uh, but on the other hand, they took us quite seriously. Uh, and back in the days, they, they actually encircled the whole Liberland with policemen uh, and they have maintained that situation for almost uh, eight years or eight, eight years and, and a little bit more. So until 6th of August uh, 2023, Liberland was protected by Croatian police in a way that nobody could get in and out. Liberland was also not claimed by Croatia, but it was actually protected by Croatia for, for all these years. I have met uh, the president of Croatia and it was a great meeting with Mr. Milanovic, President Milanovic, the last summer. We shook hands twice, not just once, and, uh, and I was able to deliver our message. And I'm so happy that, that it was well received uh, and uh, that Croatia is actually acting quite friendly uh, to Liberland in, in a way uh, since then, because that actually, I believe, caused the opening of the borders on 6th of August. Well, we actually have representative offices in more than 100 countries around the world and six of these countries already start to talk with us on official level. And uh, some of them actually even signed the Memorandum of Understanding with Liberland. So we, we are able and capable to develop diplomatic relations. So our main focus, of course, is United States, where we have a very nice representative office. And uh, we're trying to build up to a level of complete standard state recognition in these countries and now it's possible, especially after Liberlanders are actively living in Liberland and, and fulfilling this population criteria that is important for the state. I would say one of the most famous Liberlanders out there is Ron Paul, a former congressman of the United States, serving for many, many years, who also ran for presidency of the United States three times. Uh, he has been able to spark a great liberty movement in the United States and he has sent us a very supportive uh, eight-minute message how he believes that uh, Berlin will become the center of free freedom ideas uh, from around, all around the world. Uh, so his, his support is very important to us. He also developed a curriculum for the school that we are launching here on this property in Serbia, but we want to move it to Liberland as soon as possible. So his support has been quite substantial uh, in the last uh, past couple of years. So Javier Millet is a self-declared uh, general of, of Liberland. Uh, he actually said it during his campaign. He has been also outspoken supporter of the ideas that Liberland is based on, especially the idea that the people are actually contributing on a voluntary basis to the country and that they're kind of becoming shareholders of the state. Pretty amazing that nobody believed it, but he actually became the president of Argentina. So right now, Liberland office in Argentina is based in his former office from which 
he was running his campaign from and we have very good relations with the foreign ministry on, on, from beginning even before uh, before they actually took seat I was there and we had a nice discussion uh, so I believe that Argentina is one of the countries which could play a substantial role in developing diplomatic relations uh, of, of liberal land around the world. Well, Liberland doesn't plan to have an army. There are actually six countries around the world, including Costa Rica, that don't have an army. I think it's a waste of resources. We will have a, a very well-equipped uh, police, Liberland police, that will take care of the security of Liberland. But not just that, we have this concept uh, with the mobile app that anybody in Liberland uh, with a minimum qualification can become Liberland policeman. And when you basically push alert on your phone, uh, all the people around you that are able to help you will come and help you. And I think that will lower the cost of security in Liberland substantially. So we're already testing this for a couple of months. And I think this will be the most advanced system of police that, that is out there in the world. We want to be a good example for how countries can develop or how can they actually uh, become entities that instead of robbing people of their wealth, uh, they become entities of voluntary collaboration between people and that can unleash enormous amount of prosperity. You know, if, if a state nowadays takes 50-60% of what people create and redistributes it, of course it destroys prosperity. Of course it's a main reason why there is only 1-2% economic growth now in Europe in most of the countries because the states have become too big, they regulate too many things and they are collecting too much taxes. And Liberland wants to actually set an example of a, a state for a new millennia that is able to collect all the taxes or all the, all the budget on voluntary basis, basically crowdfund whatever needs to be crowdfunded. And not just that, you know, we are really, whenever you contribute to the state, you're becoming a shareholder of the state itself. And I think that's a healthy relation between the citizens and the state. Well, it's, it's a, actually a motto that has a very long historical connotations, but uh, it means what exactly it says, right? It, it really means that you take care of your own life and you don't bother the life of others. And, uh, and I think that that's the best um, philosophy that you can have towards your fellow citizens. Why, why do we need to necessarily rule one over another or rob each other? And uh, when you are becoming the citizen of the of Liberland, you have to actually pledge that you will not steal from your fellow citizens through state, uh, that you will not push legislation that will make the taxes obligatory inside of Liberland. Well, I think everybody can dream. Uh, and uh, anybody, anybody can start ex executing their dreams. So uh, we, we were surprised, enormously surprised, that uh, right after the creation of Liberland, we received 200,000 applications for citizenship. And there was no way we could process it with a small team of, let's say, five people that were with me in the office. Uh, we received more than 700,000 emails on the first week alone. And <laughs> that was also impossible to process. So we, we understood that there is a important role that Liberland has to play. There is enormous support out there for creation of a new country that will represent these principles. And for these eight years, we're consolidating this support. We're building all these representative offices. We just finished our constitution. We put that constitution on the blockchain. So we completely removed the necessity for bureaucrats inside of our system. I mean, we probably need one tenth of the bureaucratic bodies that normal state needs to have just because we put everything on blockchain and there need, doesn't need to be anybody sitting at the cataster or no clerk that will be sitting in the court because everything will be automated and transparent and immutable. Well, the budget of Liberland has been growing every year since inception. We are growing by 20 to 30 percent. Last year we have grown to 1.6 million dollars uh, and I believe that next year will be around 3 to 4 million dollars and it's, it's representing the, the needs of the country that it has uh, and I think we were doing a good job in spending it wisely uh, to be able to actually form all these bodies that that state has to have 
right? So right now we are in the final stage of, for example, developing the justice system, and normally it would cost millions of dollars just to develop that. Uh, but we are doing it very, uh, I would say, smartly with, with the right type of volunteers and, and supporters and also not too expensive programmers. So things that would normally cost the state millions of dollars we are able to put together for hundreds of thousands of dollars. And I'm very excited that all of these things are, are really coming together for this ninth anniversary of Liberland when the budgeting, the court system, elections, everything will be on single platform that we could also copy paste and give to other states to be able to run themselves on. No, it's not allowed according to Liberland constitution to create deficits. So it's one of the key principles. We believe it's not necessary for the state to get in debt. And uh, we're trying our best uh, to make sure that we always have a positive budget. And one of the ways we're Securing that is by having our reserves in Bitcoin.